Hey guys, Bryson with Trick Tools here, and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the lineup that we have of JMR tubing notchers. So, uh, the difference between these two tubing notchers here, uh, this one here is the TN1000, this is the TN300. Um, essentially, if you're notching tubing every day, uh, doing a lot of notching, you know, say building a lot of chassis and roll cages and that sort of thing, you definitely wanna go with the TN1000. Uh, this notcher here, uh, the way it's constructed, uh, it's more of a heavy duty, uh, I guess the all the components of it are built in a way where you're gonna be able to get thousands of notches out of these uh, without having to you know, replace parts or anything like that. Um, it's gonna hold up a lot better to daily abuse in your shop. So if you're doing, say, limited tubing notching, say maybe just a couple times a week, once a week, that sort of thing, and you just need a notcher that's gonna do the job when you need it to, uh, the TN300 uh, would be one to look at. So uh, the capacities on these, the TN1000 can notch from half inch uh, all the way up to two and a half inch, and I believe up to two inch pipe. Uh, the 300 can do up to three inch uh, tubing uh, all the way down to half inch. So some of the differences between these. So this one is all aluminum construction as far as the framework goes. So the main uh, two sections here are all aluminum. The, the holder for the bearing and the shaft here are, is aluminum. And then uh, the only thing that's steel on here is the clamping arm. Uh, with the you know threaded uh, handle there so uh, This one's got smaller bearings in it the shaft here is smaller. This is a one inch shaft uh, The bearings here are not replaceable uh, in the sense of just being able to swap it out easily um, And then it's got a smaller type of thrust uh, bearing in here for being able to do your uh, the pivoting around to change your angle uh, whereas the 1000 so uh, this has an inch and an eighth induction hardened shaft uh, for precision there and then you have this really wide uh, needle bearing uh, cartridge that you can actually swap out if you were to wear it out at some point you can just change that out but uh, you know one of our guys here uses and has been using one of these for many years has thousands of notches on one of these and has not yet replaced even this cartridge. So the ability is there, but uh, it's built in a way where you probably don't have to. So uh, right here is a, there's, the bearing is actually sealed. So as you're notching and chips are flying, you don't have to worry about chips getting in the bearing there at all. Uh, it's gonna be able to uh, wipe it out of there uh, with that seal on that bearing. Um, the main frame of this notcher here is steel. So you have, um, uh, the steel arm here, here, there's a thrust washer there, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's going to give you that, uh, you know, that good sturdy clamping power uh, while being able to, you know, hold everything nice and snug and tight uh, without any um, issues as far as tolerance goes. So uh, there's a lot of adjustment in both of these. Um, this one, the clamping arm is aluminum. The threaded uh, arm here for the, being able to tighten it up, you have a brass bushing that's in here that gives you that real nice smooth precision feel uh, when you when you are clamping that. Uh, these have slotted holes so you can actually move the clamping block. You can slide this clamping block around uh, and essentially what you want to be doing is getting the clamping block as close to where you're going to be notching as possible. That way uh, everything's just held that much more firm and steady. So. Um, you have the adjustment right here on the, uh, the shaft side of it that you can actually move this whole mounting block up to be able to do offset notches uh, and just make sure that you're lined up. Uh, also, if you're doing, if you're clamping a bend in here, you can you know, make sure that your notch is all lined up properly by moving this up. Um, you know, there's some different techniques to that that I'll explain here in a little bit. But uh, there's also a little holder here on the bottom uh, that's going to hold the extra uh, set screw that is replaceable in the shaft for being able to use different size hole saws. So um, both of these notchers have that ability. So you have the main size here for that'll hold all your bigger hole saw sizes uh, on the 300 up to three inch uh, and up to two and a half inch 
again on the TN1000. And then you have the smaller one that's machined down uh, to be able to hold the smaller hole saws uh, in both of these. So with these, real easy to swap them out. You can just thread them in here uh, and get them tight. Now, a good feature on these, uh, which can be used for making sure that these are tight and held in place, uh, as well as being able to get your hole saw off of the tubing notcher, there's a uh, flat that is machined at the end of the shaft here. So you have the, the part where your drill will hold on to, um, but then right here, there's a flat on both sides. So you can actually put a uh, wrench on there and be able to hold the shaft while you use an Allen wrench on the other side to be able to tighten and loosen those in place. So, um, you know, for instance, right here on this one, I've got set up uh, this one, obviously being ready to go with a hole saw in there. When this is tight, after you get done notching and everything, it's going to have that hole saw in there pretty tight. So you can, uh, again, put a wrench on there, uh, put your Allen in there and easily just crack that loose to be able to get your hole saw out of there. Uh, and then in turn also be able to swap out the threaded insert. So, um, when you want to change the angle on one of these tubing notchers, uh, it's real easy. So with that thrust bearing in here, uh, it's going to hold everything nice and snug. These on, on the 1000 here, these, uh, the main framework here is all precision ground. So, uh, everything meets up true and flat. And then, uh, you can actually, you can turn, uh, turn the nut on the bottom here to tighten up that thrust washer a little bit in order to make it a little more steady. Uh, and tighter or if you want to be able to keep it a little looser for easier adjustment you can do that as well so uh, there is no need to really tighten that up uh, in the sense of once you set your angle you don't have to come in and try to snug that up and get it tight to where it's not going to move because of the way it's designed with that thrust uh, bearing in there uh, it's actually not going to you're not going to get that side to side movement so once you once you swing it around you don't have to worry about it moving as you're pushing forward into the notch. Uh, it's going to be able to hold its place uh, pretty well. Um, you know, and like I said, you can just make sure that you got the proper amount of uh, tightness on that bearing uh, if you need to by tightening up that nut on the bottom. So it's the same on the 300, uh, but it's a smaller bearing uh, and you do need to, uh, you know, have a pretty big wrench to be able to tighten that up. And this one, uh, we would recommend, uh, you know, you can get your adjustment set, get your angle set, uh, and then you can just make sure that that's snug and tight enough to be able to hold the angle on that. So for some of the mounting of these tubing notchers, uh, we have a number of different options that are available. So both of these notchers have holes in the bottom that are, it's gonna give you the provisions to be able to then uh, you know, mount that to a table, to a plate, to a block, uh, and we have some options for that. Same thing on the 1000, there's some holes in the bottom uh, for being able to mount that. So what this one is mounted to here is our Versa mount. Uh, this is our swivel mount. So we have this block here that's already threaded so that you can uh, bolt down through the top arm. So what you'll have to do is remove the clamping block and then thread those bolts down to this. This is dropped into the Versa mount arm here. So you can loosen this up and be able to actually turn the whole notcher to get, you know, if your tube's hanging out a certain way. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to uh, mount it. Uh, it will also mount to our uh, pedestal mount for this universal block here. So uh, it will bolt right down to there. So if you wanted something on a pedestal, you could put this on a rolling base uh, that we offer that this pedestal will bolt to, or if you wanted to bolt it to the floor and you want to have a permanent location for your notcher, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, the other option would be just the block part of it here. If you wanted to just be able to um, put this in a vise to be able to use it and then put it back uh, in a drawer in your toolbox uh, until the next time you need it, uh, you can do that as well. So in order to get that mounted, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this real quick. I'm going to loosen up. We're going to actually remove the clamping block on this TN300. And then we'll back all these Allens out. Okay, so we got the clamping block off 
And like I said, there's three mounting holes in the bottom here. So I'm going to take the mounting block and these are recessed to be able to hold these bolts. Uh, so these will drop in. And then, so we'll take this mounting block, we'll get it lined up, which will make it a lot easier for clamping uh, in a vise. So you get those started. And then we'll get the vice block reattached. All right, so once you get that on there, then you can easily uh, get this and just be able to clamp it in your vise and be able to get right to work. So an easy way to be able to, uh, you know, set this at the right angle, there is the uh, indicator here on the uh, on the con on the main frame of the notcher that's going to give you uh, what notch angle you're at, uh, and both notchers have that. But the easiest way to do it is that if you're, you know, mocking something up on a project, a chassis, a roll cage, that sort of thing, and you're holding an angle finder, you know, to be able to see where your angles are coming in. Uh, once you get that set. You can actually use the uh, main frame of the notcher here to get that angle set based on your angle finder. So you can uh, use that here to be able to, you know, set it on that flat edge. You can get it to where it sits right on those inside angles and then you're ready to notch. So just a quick, easy way to be able to set your angle. All right, so when you're going to uh, be doing your notching, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, like I said, you can clamp in a bend. So if you wanted to do that, you get that slit in here uh, and you can clamp uh, in a bend uh, in the middle, wherever you want to, as far as that goes. You can do some angles, you know, if you need to get this in a bend at a uh, specific angle, that way you can do that and get this offset uh, to get your notch lined up. Uh, straight is uh, pretty simple. So, uh, get that in there, you know, get it lined up, you know, where you need it. And then you can tighten that in place. Uh, again, you can, you can adjust this block over. I mean, all this is pretty sturdy, but you can adjust it over if you need to, to, you know, get the clamp a little bit closer to the notch, you know, get your angle set and you're pretty much ready to roll. So uh, at that, we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, notching lube on here and then So you can see how quickly that goes right through there. Uh, good quality hole saw uh, with the induction hardened shaft, the big bearing in here. It's going to be able to give you a nice steady straight notch uh, where you can just rip right through it. So uh, for more information on these JMR notchers, please visit our website at tricktools.com. If you have any further questions, you can give us a call and we can get those answered for you. So uh, check out these JMR notchers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.